put more police in banks. That would be ideal, because we don't want anyone stealing your money when you save it, right? That's the key to make sure you save your money. Let's think a little bit more closely about Keith's question. Here it is again. Can you put some more banks in banks? That phrase, bank police, sounds to me like some on-the-fly editing by a smart third grader. Keith's new and improved phrase, bank police, is how we should expect a third grader to describe regulators and regulation. Keith has obviously heard that banks are doing bad things. Keith wants to know what we're going to do about it. The question about police and banks is usually you put police and banks to prevent people from robbing banks. But unfortunately, you know, we have banks now that are taking homes from people. So if we're going to put any police and banks, we need to put them in the president's office. We need to regulate the banks. Now back to more Q&A with the Floodwood third graders. You let the governor in place now. Can I start with that one? <laughs> Governor Palente is a very personable fellow. I've known him since 1993, I believe. But Governor Palente has forgotten where he came from and the help that he got as a young person, as a college student from uh, the state of Minnesota to get him to where he is today, and I'm very disappointed in him for that. Brian, I have a question. We've got over 300,000 people in the state with no health care. Governor Plenty and Tom Member, the Republican candidate, are saying they don't want to participate in the federal system. I think that is wrong. We don't save money when people aren't insured. People aren't insured go to the ER, and that's much more expensive. The next question is from Jay. Why do you want for government? I think that we need to challenge the Republican Party in particular as to what the word Republican means. The legislature is the primary body. So as a governor, my main commitment is to work to help the legislature deliberate and brainstorm and come up with ideas. Governor Pelini has treated the governor's office as if it's the third house of the legislature. We need to get away from that model. I'm running to make a difference. Uh, it's my time to serve this state that has been so good to me and given me many opportunities. This uh, response calls for standing up because it's kind of an emotional one for me, but I'm running for all of you. And I'm particularly running for the young people in the front because they remind me of my grandchildren. And when I thought about what I could bring to the governor's race, I thought about my grandchildren, and I also thought that they're not going to have the same opportunities as I have had, and I find that to be a creatures. and you can look that word up and discuss what that word means, it's not good. And my intent basically is to try to get the government of the state of Minnesota to provide you with the opportunities as nearly as I possibly can to the opportunities I have been given in the state of Minnesota. Our next question is from Jeff. Can 
next question is from Kirby. There are people losing money using credit card debt. How are you going to help stop credit card debt? Usury. Usury is charging high rates of interest. And I know that some of you know that that's a sin called out in the Bible. And I'm going to be a big tough thumper for the fact that usury is not going to be a major factor in Minnesota. Our next question is from Maya. The budget's been balanced on the backs of rural communities for years. You go to Egan and Eden Prairie and places like that, they haven't seen what we've seen with the loss of jobs for police and firefighters and others. And I think we need a governor who understands that rural Minnesota deserves some fairness. Our uh, number one priority, uh, health care. Uh, second priority, uh, protection on home mortgage uh, defaults. Uh, third priority would be uh, credit card interests. If I could do one thing, I would put everybody to work in the state of Minnesota so that the economy would roll again. Our next question is from Anna. What is it like to run for governor? Can I answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, announced on Labor Day that I was uh, running for governor last year. And after that, I spent about 10 months on the road I'm going from everywhere from the Crescent, Minnesota, which is in the southeasterly most corner of the state, and to Laverne in the southwesterly most corner after International Falls and these River Falls and everywhere in between. Uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, however, I said that if I didn't get the endorsement at the Democratic Farm Labor Convention on April 24th, that I wouldn't run because there's a couple of millionaires in this race, and then there is the endorsed candidate. And so, you know, I was hoping that this election would be about raising people's hopes, because in these times we need a lot of hope, and not about raising money. But it didn't turn out that way. I think we need to find out what possibilities there are for new ways of running for government. If we use YouTube and the internet to challenge someone like Tom Emmer, who does have the money in the backing, but who doesn't seem to have the answers and won't answer questions, we'll see what happens. Running for governor is great. By the way, is a man that played one more number when we're done? Can I sit in and play trumpet? <laughs> see, running for governor gives you that opportunity. I'm serious about this now. Thank you for attending our candidate forum.